Hexarthrus. They are one of the most aggressive stag beetles out there, and yet that's what makes them so freaking cool. Found all throughout Southeast Asia and parts of India, this stag beetle is best known for its thick, strong jaw and violent temperament. Crazy to think it was one of my first childhood beetles and that my dad almost killed it because it bit him really hard. Violence point proven. And yet, here I am messing with this guy now. Although mine seems relatively tame compared to his reputation, that'll be explained later. But males should never be kept in the same cage since they will fight over and over till there's only one left. With that being said, you've got to be careful when breeding since they will kill the female if they get the chance to, so most people will either monitor and keep them together for a limited time or lock them up with beetle handcuffs. Of course, these guys are popular for their aggression, but also because of their cool imposing jaws and stocky heads, and for the parry, the little tinge of orange at the bottom. They really are built to fight. Now, the one I've been haphazardly holding in my hand is specifically Hexarthrus parry, and even more specifically, the subspecies Paradoxus, which is a really cool name. Actually, speaking of name, it's been a while since we've had this segment, but please welcome back Entomology Etymology. Now, let's back up a little bit to Hexarthrius. In Japanese, it's called the Futamata Kuagata, named after the forked ends of the jaws, which isn't actually the case for some species and, funnily enough, isn't even unique to this genus of beetles. However, the scientific name is much more descriptive as it literally translates to six joints, which refers to the six segments of the antenna which every Hexarthrius has. Alright, now that's the end of this segment, so back to Peri subspecies. Now, Paradoxus is from Sumatra and Malaysia in general, and it is the most common of the HPs you can find in Japan. Others are Elongatus from Borneo. Okay, I know this pronunciation is wrong, but I just really want to go for it. De Rolay from Northern Thai and Southeastern Myanmar. And finally, the OG Hexarthrus Peri Peri from Northeastern India. Which, <laughs> when you say it too fast, it almost sounds like that Portuguese sauce. Anyway, these guys can get massive. I already think mine's pretty big at 66 millimeters, but they can get up to a whopping 92 and allegedly a 97 has been reported in the wild. Absolutely massive stag beetles. Apart from Perry, another hugely popular and even huger Hexarthrius is Mandibularis, of course named after its impressive mandible. Although they're second to the giraffe stag in size, they are still ginormous with the record holder Mandibularis boasting a 119.5 millimeter length. With a massive jaw comes strength drawbacks, but that's not even the case here. They can pinch really hard too, but it's reported that they often lose fights in the long run if at any point the battle had a stalemate. It's speculated that not just for this species, but Hexarthrus in general, despite its overwhelming strength and ferocity, actually has a weak mentality. I guess even the strong can have insecurities in the insect world, and it's probably why my boy's not biting me now, and was pretty tame in my previous spoon video. Just a small plug, top right corner if you haven't seen it, and if you like this video and you're not subscribed, please do so now. Anyway, I only covered Perry and Mandibular slightly in depth, but here are some other Hexarthrus that I think are pretty cool too. Forestary. Rhinoceros. God, this one's so cool with his like little wee horn. I just love it when stag beetles have both an impressive jaw or mandible and like a horn. Even though I feel like they can be barely considered a horn, but it's it's cool anyway. It's cool anyway. Rhinoceros is just such a fitting name. Anyway, Davisone. Melchioritis. Kirchneri which is thought to be originally a hybrid of Peri and Mandibularis that speciated into its own. In fact, other instances of hybridization have been confirmed as well, such as Mandibularis and Rhinoceros. 
Now there's many more Hexarthrus, but I just want to conclude this segment with my favorite, a Bugatti. <laughs> I apologize. Unfortunately, there isn't too much more information on these battle beetles unless you're interested in breeding. Then there's a whole wealth of information out there, but if you're interested in their biology and ecology like I am, we're out of luck. The last fun fact I can give is about identification, and that it's very difficult to differentiate between the females of Peri and Mandibulars, and since they live in the same place, it's not uncommon to accidentally get a wild Mandibulars instead of a Peri. So if you're ever having trouble mating wild type Hexarthrases, that could be why. Alright, thank you guys so much for making it to the end of this video. Let me know what beetles you'd like me to cover next, and consider becoming a member of this channel. This video wouldn't be here without their brainstorming and support, and I'm eternally grateful. But until then, have a great rest of your day.